creating a labor matrix. Key to a schedule is you got to project sales. Best way to project sales is real simple. You take the last four weeks of daily sales and you break them down by the hour. Literally, I want to be able to see every hour for every Monday the last four weeks. Every hour for every Tuesday the last four weeks. Every hour for every Wednesday the last four weeks. And you keep that running total of the last four weeks. So when a new Monday comes up, you get rid of the one four weeks ago, and now here's your new four weeks. I can project my sales volume from it. I can sit here and see that from 11 to 12, I did 150 bucks. The next Monday, 11 to 12, I did 130. Next Monday, 11 to 12, I did 170. Next Monday, 11 to 12, I did 160. Chances are pretty good, and you don't have to overthink it. You don't have to sit there with a calculator and add them all up. You can round them off to zeros, but chances are pretty good, and I'm going to do about 150 bucks, give or take, between 11 and 12 on Monday. You can do that with every hour. It's amazing. The trends in the restaurant industry, if you look at it day to day, you see these huge swings. But if you look at it hour to hour, you really don't. Let's say I had one day that was in here that was 370 bucks. You just ignore it. Because something happened, and if you're running the floor, you would know what that was. Maybe something going on in town, what have you. The same would go true is let's say if I had one day that was 30 bucks. Maybe the weather was bad. Who knows? You ignore it. A projection is a boom, just a quick give them a number, poop, give them a number, poop, give them a number. Move on. Well, so if you do that every day, every hour, I'm going to be able to project my sales volume within about 5% every day. There's always exceptions to the rule. You don't worry about the exceptions to the rule. But I'm going to project my sales volume. I'm going to be able to take and then ask myself, as the manager doing the schedule, the critical question, how many people do I need to serve the guest at my level of standard on 150 bucks in sales in that hour? It becomes very easy. I know how many bodies I need. I know the positions I put them in. I know the lineup card. For $150 of sales, I know I need one cook, I need one dining room person, I need a host, I need this, I need that. Real easy. Also, if you break it down, you will see in most restaurants, we'll use an example of a lunch restaurant. You'll see from 11 to 12, let's say they did 150 bucks. 12 to 1, let's say they did 450 bucks. 1 to 2, let's say they did 350 bucks. 2 to 3, they did 100 bucks. Well, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to figure out the chances are you kind of can see the stair step. The back half of this hour, it's not 175 and 175. It's probably more like 275 and 75. Because this one, when you split it, is 50-50 on the front half of the hour and the back half of the hour. Well, so I can see the stair step, which allows me to cut the employees which gives me time to kick them out here instead of waiting all the way to here, which is the difference between making money and not. It is the difference between having labor optimized, where literally you're getting bang for your buck for every dollar of labor you're spending. Creating a labor matrix starts with creating the projection. It takes time. You have to be good at it. You will get better at it over time, but not if you give it to somebody else. That's a management function. Not assistant manager, not kitchen manager, not dining room manager, unit manager. Okay, so now you have your projections. You should be able to sit here and look at the projections by the hour, by the day, by the week. I know where I'm going to be able to place my people based on their skills. Well, so I take the projection and I make a matrix. And a matrix is just this. If you look across the day, we won't
won't go any further than that. You know it goes out. If you look at the day, let's say our business opens at 11, just for the sake of argument, opens there, which means I have zero sales here, I have zero sales here, and all I do is I, pro I, I put my projection. Let's say this is for a Monday. I put my projected dollar amount under each hour. I can now sit here and see, I'm going to do 150 bucks at 11. I'm going to do about 350 bucks between 12 and 1. I can see my projection. And what a labor matrix is, is taking a line graph and literally placing how many people I need for each of them. So if at 11, let's say I'm doing 150 bucks, and I'm saying I need a total of four employees to handle the 150 bucks of sales, I'm literally going to do a line. There's my four lines. And let's say this is 350, and I'm saying I need nine employees to do that volume. I'm going to put nine lines. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And let's say I'm going to do 250, and I'm saying I need eight employees. I'm going to have one line less. And let's say I'm going to do 100, which means I need three employees, which means I'm going to have one, two, three. Guess what? The line matrices are my shifts. There's my shift. I need a person from 11 to 2. I need a person from 11 to 2. I have not done the stair-stepping yet. I'll do that. I know how it falls off, so I'm going to cut one person off a little less. I'm going to cut person off a little less. I'm going to leave that person. Those are my shifts. Now, I can mix and match them however I want. I could have this person be here, so I could take this one off if I wanted, and I could just add it here. There's my three people. There's my eight people. There's my nine people. There's my four people. Those are my shifts. Now all I gotta do is fill in the names, right? Well, and of course you have to have prep, so there's certain things you're gonna have to add. Even though I have zero sales, I'm gonna have prep. Even though I have zero sales at close, I'm gonna have closing. I have management functions, taking deposits to the bank. But only a manager knows all that. Only the person that's running the business knows all that. And so by making the labor matrix, they're saying here's the shifts. There's the shifts. And then what you do is you go to the kitchen manager or you go to the dining room manager and let them help you place the names with the shifts. Kitchen manager is going to know who the good cooks are, who the better dishwasher is. You probably will too, but that person's going to have a better insight. Well, so then you have them help you with the names. My way of doing it is equivalent to the NBA saying the game is going to start at 7 o'clock at night, and guess what? You can each have five people on the floor. No more, no less. I don't care who they are. I'm the NBA. I don't care. You get to choose the five players. But the game is starting at the time I tell you. The number of players you can have on the floor is the number I'm telling you. Now, if you're good, you'll put your best players at the peak periods during the most important part of the game. But that's up to you. And therefore, the management people can help with that. <laughs>